Uh, hi, welcome to One Word a Day. I'm Sophia Pilot into the universe of Chinese. Let's continue our exploration of three character Chinese expressions a day in November. And we'll do something different in December. Okay, 智能化 is our today's expression. And well, a few episodes ago, we talked about 工业化, which is industrialization and 智能化. I translate it as smart eyes. It's to 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 give power to um, otherwise unsmart things, things like smart TV, right? Smart phone, uh, that everyday devices that we're so getting used to, um, and you give them power, give them network, so that they are tapped into some as if they are tapped into some intellect and they are powered out. <laughs> so that's 智能化, okay. Um, 智, intellect, okay. Mm, especially in the age of AI, right? It seems like AI is super good conversationalist. And how can you, how, how can you tell, how can you deny almost like if it has intellect or not? Um, especially it's so knowledgeable. It has, it, it tapped into the whole, you know, wealth of knowledge, whatever knowledge that's put in the written form and put online. Um, it has a wide range of that. It's probably a subset. It's not a whole uh, www on it, but it's a big, big subset of it. Okay. Um, we have, well, in contemporary, you can see it's one, two, three, three things pieced together. In ancient expression, it's four things pieced together. And even four things, you can kind of separate this as two things. Um, okay, let's go one by one. This left thing, it means shooting an arrow. It actually means arrow. Okay, so this is the mechanism on the bow uh, that the, where the arrow goes out. So on the bow, there is a segment that you sit your arrow on before you pull the trigger, release, and the bow goes out. So this depicts this close-up view of that arrow sitting ground. And this is the arrow, obviously. So this is the arrow shooting from its arrow shooting point. <laughs> I don't know the term. So that, that depicts the arrow. So arrow represent. I guess in ancient times, the fastest conceivable speed. So arrow represents speedy. Um, I guess in ancient times, like, okay, humans can run, but not so fast. Humans definitely cannot outrun the arrow, right? Um, birds can fly. I mean, the arrow probably can, some good arrow shooters probably can catch the bird as well. So arrow, in ancient times are visibly most like fastest thing in everyday life. So that means quick, means speedy. And then we have the mouse symbol. We have the sun light symbol. The sunlight came from this um, containment, means the sphere, the sun. And then there is horizontal line in it, means the energy from the sun. And then the middle part is one single sun ray shooting out from the sun. So Chinese have its way of a simplification. Like this means a net. And it only use two repetitions of this crisscross structure to mean the whole net. You Your brain just fill out the rest of the net. Um, and here is just one single sun ray sunbeam coming from it to mean the whole sphere emitting light like that, 360 degrees. Not even 360, 360 is still too deep. This is a sphere, so it's a 360 and all over the sphere. It's, um, so because it's, a, it's so um, multi-dimensional, therefore it got super simplified into just one sunbeam. So sunbeam simplify in lightning, like something you can see in the light. It's no longer in the dark. You understand, you understand 
what's happening or what's the structure of that thing. Okay, so quick understanding and then the mouse symbol probably means um, if something you can verbalize it, if something you can talk about, that something is no longer in the dark. It already at least processed in your, in your mind. You already have a certain grasp about it, right? Therefore, you can talk about it. Um, and then the right side, the two horizontal lines with this almost like a <laughs> kind of smoke going up. Um, that symbol often seen in Chinese um, to mean the air, the, the air from your pipe, <laughs> from your lung going out and then emit the blockage, which is your pronunciation, I mean, your um, your chamber of the mouth going to have the teeth, tongues, the lips, they're going to create obstacles for the air to go out unobstructively, right? Um, because you want to pronounce, therefore you have to shape your pronunciation <laughs> um, chamber into a certain shape. So this pronunciation, this speaking function, like how we speak, um, how we utter the sound, that was uh, a lot of a lot of times expressed in Chinese to to be this breath of air going through this blockage, this obstacles, and then going out. And so I guess the second hard line means going out, uh, escape. So the the sound once you once it's produced, once it's utter, the, this breath of air, once it's out of your mouth, it's out there. It's no longer contained within you. Um, and that oftentimes means you finally, almost like a breathe out, it's a relaxing um, step for you. Like you you can, you can finally let, let out this <laughs> internal message out. Um, so there is this communication, both the mouth symbol and this letting out of the air, um, both have this communication function in there. So the intellect in Chinese expressed in the speed and the enlightenment, the understanding, like visually you can see something um, from the sunbeam and also you can express something. You, you feel you can let it out. Finally, it's not in the dark or finally it's no longer inside you, no longer torturing you. Uh, this message is it's ex expressed, therefore it's understood. And that's the definition of Chinese way of intellect. That's zhi. Okay, nong. If we talk about the zhi as intellectual power, nong is in correspondence to that more means physical power, means things are energized, therefore they can do something, they can move. So this not only understanding, right? Intellectually understanding something, this non means physically, you can do something, you can act on your understanding. And this non, I translate it as energy, it can also mean capable or ability. Um, so non came from this net, capturing the bear. And till today, I'm not exactly sure why the icon of the bear came from four separated pieces. Normally, the animal symbols in Chinese are came together, like everything is connected on one entity. Like you can see, it's one body. Now this bear is like four parts. I don't exactly know. Maybe one day you can figure out. Um, but according to scholars, the, these are the four legs of the bear. This is the bicep, the muscle of the bear, and this is the head, and the, it's, it actually means the spoon. So it's the big spoony looking uh, big head of the bear. So together, it's the bear. The bear, probably in ancient times, uh, was perceived as the mo most powerful muscular animal that are not easy to capture, definitely not your regular prey, right? Not your dinner food on the dining table. Um, but somehow ancient times, they did, did develop this technology to capture, to entrap the bear. And this is what this net is for. And this net 
is also put in there to mean to harness the muscle power from the bear um, to, to be able to navigate or control the energy in there because the bear represent energy, represent this, this muscular, muscular um, power, muscle power. Um, so this is Chinese expression of energy. So intellect and energy. And of course, like intellect, if you don't energize it, it's going to be just be there without uh, functioning or being active. So you have to activate it by injecting energy to it. So zhi and neng have to pair together so that it's functioning <laughs> intellect. Okay, and hua, again, we have this same structure, which a side profile view of human figure. This is the arm, this is the legs. And because it's a profile view, you want to see one arm and one leg. This is the butt, right? And this is the head. And then here, this human figure got flipped upside down into this figure. And it looks structurally the same, but reoriented. That's Chinese way to express transform. And it's a Chinese way to capture in a 2D frame of a 4D happening, which is something happening in a 3D world, but over time. And that's transform. So when we say transform, when we add a hua at the very end of this expression, that means uh, make something with intellect. So it's smartize something. Um, I don't exactly know why I choose here because there's no electronics in here. It's still uh, a human structure uh, that looks boxy and small boxy. I guess it's the intricate pattern on it. On the top, where it's structured like that, it almost, almost looks like uh, mm, your computer computer frame, kind of evoking of this you know, computer age image uh, because you need a ventilation of whatever um, disks or CPUs uh, in caging there, right? But this is obviously not that. This is a human building for something. And then the interesting part is the reflection because there is this rippling. So this is not a super flat surface. There is rippling over here. And therefore you see the distortion of this perfectly squares or rectangles, this boxy shapes got distorted. And that's where things get interesting. And if we view the above the water, the, um, the structure itself, as a human abstraction of things, like a human understanding of something, right? Everything is boxed up, you know, in its pigeonholes. It's structurally understandable for us. And the bottom with this rippling <laughs> is like reflecting of the real life. That's what's real happening. Things are not structurally perfectly standing still as is. And I think this smart eyes is the ability to at least go to this structure to give us a, a certain understandable, simple, super simplified structure, a modeling of the world, to use that to guide us to try to understand what's the real world happening. So that's my understanding of smart eyes. All right, catching to the currency of thinking about one word a day, Sophie. See you next.